I'm Ward Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Secret stutters. Do you know what that means? Have you ever heard the expression, secret stutters? We know about stutters. We know about people who curl their lips and twist their faces and distort their minds and bodies to get sound out. We live in a sound society, and if you don't have the ability to speak audibly, intelligibly, where are you? If you st 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 stutter, what will people say? Will you be able to face them? And the answer, obviously, is not well. People expect you to be fluid, fluent, to speak at ease, say what you have in your mind, and not sh 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 Why do people stutter? And why do people believe they are secret stutterers when they don't stutter? Join with me. We live in a society that says, be fast, be quick, be nimble, a voice and speech. With speech, we believe that when we say the word, it should be said very, very correctly. We don't like baubles. What is a bobble? A bobble is hesitation, repetition, prolongation, ah and o. Oh. Did you know that stutterers believe that speech is perfect? Did you know that? If you ask a person who stutters, what is normal speech, they will tell you it's perfect speech. Believe it or not, it's fluid, it's fluent. There are no pauses, hesitations, no bobbles, no ahs and ohs. It's just perfect. May I ask you this? Do you know anybody who's a perfect speaker? I don't. I was the director of the adult stutterers group at Stanford University, and before then and after, I've never met anybody who's a perfect speaker. I don't believe there is a perfect speaker in the world. Maybe a robot, but a robot doesn't have a very meaningful sound. Not yet. Maybe aliens from outer space will come down and sound like us. We don't sound too good in voice. We have nasal, thin, kid-like voices. We have guttural, raspy voices. We're not taken with voices per se, although we believe it represents us and often misrepresents us. But in speech, we believe, the stutterers believe, and I'm going to ask you what you believe, is normal speech perfect? Stutterers, from my experience over the years, almost to a person believe that that's true. That's impossible. You can't be perfect in speech. You may have good speech, fluid speech, fluent. It just flows for a period of time. But you become what is called disfluent. You become disoriented. You become concerned about what you have in mind and your your voice and your speech he hesitates like, like like that and may maybe you re repeat yourself that's normal those are what I call baubles I call it the bobbling of America we all bobble sometime during the day some of us become too concerned too focused on the bobble and we can become stutters. Can we really become stutters by focusing in on our speech? Well, that's how it begins, I find. Stuttering begins between the age of three and seven. I believe most people would agree on that. The experts would agree on it. And why is that? Is it because of neurological deficiency, mental imbalance? Is it chemistry? No. My experience is that between those ages, kids are trying to balance their speech act. And parents may say, talk up, talk faster, talk this way, talk that way. And some kids can't take it, and so their speech breaks down. Some can't handle articulation before their time. Parents may have a desire to have the child talk better at a given period of time, and the child can't. Pressure, anxiety, psychological, emotional. Is it neurological? No, I don't believe it's neurological. But when it happens, what the child has to do is 
not take it seriously, but the child doesn't know that. And so the child is out of directed and influenced by what is happening around him or her. And males basically respond five to one to become stutterers rather than girls. Why? Because the motor skills are not developed too early. It takes time to do it. The girls have better motor skills earlier, better speech abilities. And we look to making kids have perfect speech, better speech, and they can't do it. That's my take on stuttering. And I found that to be true case after case all too often. Join with me on The Secret Stutterer. While I was the director of the Adult Stutterers Group at Stanford University, we had a young speech pathologist, a young lady, who was working on the staff there, as I was. And I had her in a group of stutterers, severe stutterers. We had a group of 40 or 50 people in there, and we met twice a week for about three hours each time. And I would ask those who were attending to see what I'm doing to join with me, and one time I mentioned her bobbling, and she was repeating and hesitating and, and prolongating sounds, and she broke down, literally broke down and said that she's a stutterer. She always felt that she was a stutterer, and she was what I call the secret stutterer. That's where I got the concept from. There are many people like that, I find, who believe they're secret stutterers. They believe that they're hidden from the public, but internally they believe they are secret stutterers and they don't want people to know that they're stuttering so they don't speak that much. It's not interesting. I don't find them to be stutterers at all. There's a huge number of people that dwarf the number of actual stutterers. Stuttering in the country may be one to two percent of the population. If there are 280 people, so it's maybe five or six million people stuttering, actually stuttering, with the eyes turned down or the face distorted or the mind thinking before it speaks to say the word, how to say the word, fearing sounds, those are really stutterers. And the problem is that if you are a real stutterer, you do have a problem in communicating. And that usually starts between the ages of three and seven. But let's move on from there and come back to the real stutterers and talk about secret stutterers. Secret stutterers, I believe, are everywhere about us. And they're not aliens from outer space. These are real demons that we hide within ourselves. Turn with me. The demons that we believe that when we talk and repeat, when we, 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 we repeat like that or hesitate or prolongate, maybe, we believe those baubles are a sign of stuttering. Let me reassure you, it's not stuttering. Stuttering is when you motor, motor boat the sound, when you machine gun the sound, m -m -m my m -m -m my when I say my, my name, my, my name, that's bobbling. That's normal hesitation and repetition. Um, uh, when I do that, that's a normal pause, a vocal pause. Um, that's very normal. Many of us do that. We also have runners. We begin our speech by saying, well. We begin our speech by saying, you know, or I mean, or you know what I mean, or I mean and you know. We use a lot of runners. Those are called runners. We use look. We look, look, look. We say listen. Those are very normal runners. Many of us use that. We're not stutterers. But secret stutterers believe they may be using that to cover themselves and their deficiency in speech. Not so. It's very normal to do so. The difference between a normal speech pattern and an abnormal one is this. The abnormal one curls the lips and the tongue and gets the person to think of the sounds well in advance of saying the sound. So in their mind's eye, they have a teleprompter thinking of sounds they fear they can't say. There are sounds we all have trouble with, aluminum, statistics, and so forth. Those are normal, difficult sounds. But we fail to realize that we also have problems with normal speech. 
And it's very normal to bobble, to hesitate, to repeat, to prolongate, to say ah, to say well, to wave our hands around. There are people who can't talk without waving their hands around. They wave it this way and that way, and you watch them. If you hold their hands, they can't talk. They are very expressive with their hands. And many of us are very expressive with our bobbling. Well, 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 well may, may, maybe, you know, Woody Allen, of course, is a, a great example. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then there are those who are very, very down in speech. They're witty and outgoing, such as Henry Kissinger. I feel that the situation that they have, and they talk like that. They're perfectly normal. They just misuse the voice, in my opinion, and they needn't do that. But Woody Allen is not a stutterer, and if you listen to him, and you happen to be a stutterer, you may think Woody Allen is a form of a stutter. He's very normal in his speech. He just bobbles a great deal. A number of us bobble a great deal, but we're not stutters. And some of those who bobble a great deal, all too often, all too many, believe they are secret stutters. Do you believe you're a secret stutterer, that you really in your heart believe that you stutter and you know it and somebody's going to find you out and what will that say about you? So you don't speak that much and you're very concerned and your personality is affected and psychologically and emotionally you're affected. Think about it. Secret stutterers are all about us. It's almost as good as the, the conspiracy uh, theories about us. They're all about us. And, of course, we know that bobbling, bobbling, if you're a stutterer, is abnormal. It's like an alien from outer space. It's something that you shouldn't do. You shouldn't have. It's perfectly normal. I'll bet you that if aliens ever come down from outer space, they'll be just like us, bobbling. They won't be robots. Because if they're out of space and they've survived, they had to have normal speech. Normal speech has bobbles galore. Just listen to people talk on radio. Not on, on uh, scripted material. Not news anchors. Those people have rehearsed the material. I do want to tell you about a young man who thought that normal speech was perfect and found out it wasn't. And it helped him to become like you and me bobblers of the world. Turn with me. The young man was a severe stutterer, couldn't take public speaking in college. He dropped out, and his father referred him to me, and he was severe, couldn't talk. Step by step, I removed that severe stuttering, got him to bobble very, very, very easily, and then cut back on the bobbling, the extent of it, gradually, until, until he could talk like, like, like this. And one day he told me he wanted to go to see a show. He was a young man, the happy day set. And I was a consultant on that program for a while, so I took him to the show, and Jerry Paris was the director. And Paris said, sure, you can bring the young man. And he noticed that there was one montage, that's a take of a, of a scene, it was done 16 times, 16 times, two or three minute segment of the show, the happy day set, 16 times, because the actors couldn't get it straight. Ron Howard, the Fonz, the lady, Tom Bosley, they couldn't get it straight. And they would bobble and mess it up. And so the director would have them redo the scene from different angles and try to get them to say it without any bobbling at all. And finally they did it on the 16th take. The young man, after the segment was done, thanked the actors for trying to make him feel better because he knew that that bobbling wasn't normal and they couldn't understand what he was talking about he thought that they were doing that performance in part for him which of course is very interesting and he learned a great deal after that because if they bobbled then he could bobble it is normal to bobble he found out but the original point of view he had is that when he heard people on radio, such as anchors, he thought that normal speech was perfect. He had to relearn that concept and change the concept to
to realize the anchors rehearsed their speech over and over and over until they took the bobbles, the hesitations, and the prolongations out. There's a very interesting story about Barbara Streisand. She did a record album, album, and they took out her bobbles, and it was in the newspaper item where she had them put the bobbles back because she wanted normal speech, not perfect, clean speech. There is no such thing as perfect, clean speech. It's edited out, but when the people are doing the presentation or talking in public, they bobble. We all bobble. But if you edit stuff, you can edit out the bobbles, and the stutterers have the feeling that speech is perfect. Secret stutterers believe, as the stutterers do, that speech is perfect. Isn't that interesting? If you listen to anybody talk, if you listen to me when I'm off the set, when I'm in the gym, when I was playing basketball or swimming, when I'm working out at the Y, I bobble, I hesitate, I repeat, I prolongate. I'm not perfect. I don't try to be perfect. I know that there is no such thing as perfection. You can try to be better than you are, but you can never be perfect in speech because speech is imperfect. There are no perfect speakers. And that's what the secret stutterers and the real stutterers have to get across. And when they learn that, it's shocking. Because their image from childhood, real stutterers, are that speech is fluid, fluent, perfect. There are no breaks, no hesitations, no prolongations. Doesn't that strike a bell or hit a nerve? Aren't you amazed to find out when you think about it, when you consider it, speech is imperfect, and that stutterers, secret stutterers, and real stutterers believe it's perfect? Ask somebody who stutters. Don't be afraid of them. They'll answer your question. Do you believe speech is perfect? Yes. Yes. They don't want to stutter. But in the process of trying to be perfect, that's what's creating the stuttering. That's ironical. The very concern they have the very image they have in mind, the very role they're playing, makes them stutterers. And stuttering begins between, begins, do you hear that? That's a hesitation or a prolongation. Right, right, prolongation. Stutterers don't want to do that. And secret stutterers have the same fear and concern that they're going to reveal themselves. Do you have that fear and concern? My position is that many of us so-called normal speakers, so-called normal speakers, are secret stutterers. I talk with people. They're concerned about stuttering. Why are they concerned about stuttering? Because they believe in their heart and their mind all too often they're secret stutterers and it's going to out at some point or other, especially in public speaking, when they're on the stage somewhere, when they're in a performance. They fear they're going to Stutter. Stuttering is something you do to yourself. The medical community has said that they can put botulinum toxin into the vocal folds, poison, paralyze the vocal cord, rather draconic, and they see stuttering as possibly due to a neurological factor. I don't. I see stuttering as due to a wrong image, a wrong concept of what normal speech is. And my experience is borne out by successes with stutterers over the years, not only as the director of the adult stutterers group at Stanford University, but as the director of the UCLA Voice and Speech Clinic when I served there on staff and faculty. And that was borne out repeatedly, time and again. I learned to understand stuttering from Dean Williams, who is a protege of a very famous uh, gentleman at Iowa uh, University. And uh, he was of the view that stuttering was in the ears of the listener. It is and it isn't. It's also in the minds of those who are speaking and taught to speak as though speech is perfect. Speech is never perfect. Never. Wendell Johnson was the gentleman's name and he opened avenues to me and to others to understand that speech or stuttering is what we make of it. He himself was a severe stutter to his dying day. And it's ironical 
that many of the people in the field of therapy, those who teach stuttering, rehabilitation, are stutterers themselves. My concern is that they should look to themselves to change and help themselves and give us the realization that if their theories and their views are valid, they can help themselves. It is the same with the medical community in treating a condition called the strangled boy spasmodic dysphonia. They're putting botulinum toxin in under the idea and the concept that it paralyzes the vocal cord temporarily and stops some of the severe symptoms of a strangled voice. Strangled voice and stuttering are related, it is said. One of the strangled voice is called laryngeal stuttering. They can't get the voice out. And stuttering is up here around the mouth. Boom, 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 but you're, in a sense, you are, and those who are stuttering, and those who strangle their voices in the throats, are doing something that's unnatural, I find, and creating the very problem that they're seeking outside help for. My suggestion, as was said in Willie Shakespeare, the fault lies not in our stars, but in, our, in ourselves, but in ourselves. And you hear me repeat and hesitate, or prolongate, or bobble, and if you're having a problem with your speech, think of the reason why you try to be perfect. If your stuttering gets worse, despite the fact that you're having assistance or therapy, think of an alternative approach, one that says it's your image, your role that you're trying to play out, your script that's not really working for you. Stuttering, I find, is what you do to yourself and to your speech, and making speech perfect creates all the havoc and all the problems in the world. If you're strangling your lower throat down here and talking from there, it's not coming from outer space. It's coming from talking long in the lower throat. And I report cures and recoveries of the strangled voice and strangled throat for the past 25 years. With stuttering, there are cures and recoveries as well. On this program, I've had a young man who had a severe stutter problem and he came from one of the major universities. I worked with him for six months, and I didn't see him for 10 years, and after 10 years, he appeared here. We put him under Klieg lights, and he was a perfectly normal speaker, perfectly normal speaker, which means when I say perfectly normal, he bobbled, and he wasn't concerned about it, uh, the bobbling. He wasn't, did you hear the bobble? He wasn't concerned about it, and people did not believe he stuttered. He never had a problem with stuttering after six months, of therapy. What does that say? Stuttering is, in a sense, an image problem. And so are strangled voices and hoarse voices and misused voices. We try to fit our voices into the wrong area, into the lower throat, when we have misused voices. Basically, all pathology comes from the lower throat and voice. And with stuttering, pathology comes from trying to preform our tongue, to put it in a place in the mouth before we say the sound. As stutterers, do they preform their tongue? And they will tell you, of course. They put it up against the teeth to say the sound 30 seconds or 15 seconds before they say the sound. Can people walk that way thinking of the muscles in their arm or leg before they walk? No, it's impossible. But stutterers try to do that. People with misused voices try to force the voice from the lower throat. That's impossible. You change your voice for the better, you change your speech for the better. It's natural, it's something you can do, but you have to change your image of what speech is about. We don't think about that. We want a shot, we want medicalization, we want a surgical procedure. I'm suggesting, rather than drugs and medical intervention, that we look to natural intervention, change our concepts of our speech, of our voice, and see if it doesn't help us step by step remove the problems that we're con confronted with, confronted with. And you hear that, that's a bobble, confronted with. We know to work our bodies, we go to a gym, we know to watch our diet, we know how to remain healthy in great part today. It's not coming from outer space. What we're doing is realigning our thinking, reasserting our control of our lives, of our bodies. And I'm suggesting we take control and reassert our control of our speech and our voice. Are you a secret stutterer? Do you wonder when you talk, will your voice come out? Will it be natural, normal, and you fear it won't? 
realign your concept, your image of what you're doing. If your voice doesn't come out and you're trying to talk and you're looking for medicalization, think again. Demystify, demystify the problems of speech, demystify and demedicalize the problems of voice. That's my message. And if you try to do that, you may have an alternative answer to why you can't talk, why you stutter, and why you believe you're a secret stutter. You've got a concept in mind that's not working. It's impossible. Perfect speech is impossible. Perfect voice is not. You can have a perfect voice. You can have a clear voice forever. If you put your voice up in the mass around your lips and nose where all good and great voices come from. And if you use your speech properly, your speech will be intelligible and audible for the rest of your life. Voices are what we do to ourselves, and speech is what we do to ourselves, too. So if you're a secret stutter and you fear that your speech won't come out right and you're psychologically and emotionally uptight, rethink the image, the role, and do the same for your voice. I'm Mort Cooper. The title of the program is Change Your Voice, Change Your Life on the screen. Let's take a look at books you may find in the bookstore or in the library. Here are the books, Stop Committing Voice Suicide. It talks about strangled voices and hoarse voices, and it tells you what to do for yourself and their cures and recoveries, and there's Winning With Your Voice and Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. We can see it on the screen, and it also tells you how to improve your voice and Change Your Voice, Change Your Life talks about the bobbling of America, stuttering, so that you have a better concept and insight into the problems of speech. If we can take a look at Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, you get the concept of that book, and it's in the bookstores, and it's in the library. Thank you for joining with me. I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, and Change Your Speech, Change Your Life. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>